Hello! In the next eight minutes or so, I'm going to share with you the secrets behind creating a great looking logo design. We'll be looking at the tools, the techniques, and a few things to watch out for. Now, the logo I'll be designing belongs to my second channel. It's basically a giant letter S with some gradients. But if you are following along, you can use any letter you like or a different shape entirely. And if you do get any value from this video and you'd like to show your support, that'd be amazing, guys. I'll leave a link to my second channel below the like button. Now, let's get to the good stuff. Let's boot up Illustrator next door and get started. Whoosh! Right here, so I have a new document. First, I'm going to select the ellipse tool and then click and drag holding shift to draw a circle. Drag holding alt or option to duplicate this and scale it up. Select everything and set the fill to none. Let's move this top part a bit further up. Select the line tool and click holding shift to draw a line. And first we're going to look at lining up objects. So first I'm going to select everything and align these centrally. And then holding shift, I can move these up and down so the lines all connect, something like this. Now by holding shift, I can use the main selection tool to extend this line. And if I zoom in super close, I can try and line this circle up with this line even more. And if I press command or control Y, I can jump into outline mode and then select the direct selection tool. I can then use this to move the anchor point out the way and then pull it back and it will snap to this path. And make sure when moving this around that the line does not intersect with the circle. Let's do the same thing for the other end. And the goal is to line these up precisely so we get a smooth letter S. Now let's go and thicken up that stroke a bit. There we go, much better. And now it's time to make some cuts along the path. So let's go and select the scissor tool, usually hidden under the eraser tool, and we can click anywhere on a path to make a cut. Now we can do this here and also over here. And by adding these cuts, we get more anchor points. And now we're going to look at removing these anchor points. So let's switch back into outline mode and click between two anchor points to select the path and press delete or backspace. And if I do it again, well, you can see it removes a bit too much. So let's undo that and make sure if you do find any stray anchor points that you delete those as well. Now let's do the same for the bottom. And you can see here, I did the same thing again. Oops. So drag over that segment and press delete or backspace. Make sure you get rid of any stray anchor points and then we can look at removing and merging segments. So we nearly have a letter S. Let's drag over everything and select the shape builder tool. Hold alt or option and drag over a path to remove it. And as you might imagine, do the same for the bottom. Oh, oh no, no. Now that's annoying, it didn't work, but it's good because I can now show you how to get around this. Because trust me, this will happen a lot. So first let's undo that. And then we need to zoom in super close on where the paths meet. Now this issue shouldn't happen because I lined everything up perfectly, but it does. And to get around this, we need to create a tiny bit of intersection. Now you can see my smart guides keep snapping this to something, which is annoying. So let's turn those off with command or control U. And now I can make this intersection very, very slight. And if you have trouble selecting the path you want, just press command or control two to lock one path. Select the other path and then unlock them after. Right, now we know these paths are definitely touching. Let's select everything, grab the shape builder tool, hold alt or option and drag, and it works. Oh, thank Christ for that. Now, if you've done this correctly, you should have three separate pieces. And now we're going to join the paths together. So using the direct selection tool, drag over those end anchor points, go to object, down to path, and select join. Do the same for the other end so we have one long path and now we can round off the strokes. So from the stroke drop down, change the cap type to round and this will round off those hard edges. And if you'd like to trim them down a bit, just grab the scissor tool, make a cut and then delete the end anchor point just to trim it down a bit. Now let's look at extending paths. Okay, let's grab everyone's favorite, the pen tool. Now we can select an existing anchor point and hold shift and click to extend this line. Now I'm not using this technique this time, but I wanted to demo it because it is very useful. Right, now let's thicken up the stroke and I'm just going to trim down this top section a wee bit more. Right, now let's look at expanding strokes. So with everything selected, go to object, expand, leave fill and stroke checked and click OK. And what this does is convert a stroke into a shape with a solid fill. Now using the eyedropper tool, we can sample this light green and then move on to using shapes to define new segments. So once again, let's select the ellipse tool and create a circle. Let's make sure we have no fill and a stroke and let's make that stroke the darkest green. And I'm going to adjust the size and position so it looks something like this. I can then jump into outline mode, zoom in nice and closely and line everything up precisely. And the more you zoom in, the better the end result. Right, now let's look at separating shapes. Right, so I'm gonna select everything, go to edit, down to copy, and then edit and paste in place. Hold shift on the keyboard and use the right arrow key to nudge this out. Select the first shape, Grab the Shape Builder tool, and once again, hold Alt or Option and click and drag through all of these segments to remove them. Now we need to do the exact opposite for this second shape. So let's start by removing the pieces we don't need. And then once you've done that, you can let go of Alt or Option and just click and drag through the remaining segments. And we can then hold down Shift and use the left arrow key to nudge this back into position. And let's give this segment the darkest green. Right, now let's do this again for the bottom.
And if you get any random bits of path left over, just make sure to remove them. Right, now let's apply some custom gradients. So let's select the main body and open up the gradient panel. Click on the slider to add the default gradient. Double click the black, switch over to the swatches tab, and then select the darkest green. Click anywhere on the slider to add another color. Let's select the middle green, double click the white, and then add the lightest green. Ooh, looking good. Now we can select those darker segments and then use the eyedropper tool to sample that same gradient. Now this does look a bit shit, so let's change the angle of this gradient so we get the darker color on the left. And just by doing this, you can see it makes a big difference. Now for that main body section, let's add a few more swatches and we'll have that lighter green right in the middle acting as a highlight. And I'm also going to adjust the angle. Now I'm feeling pretty confident now, so I'm going to delete these three swatches. And next it's time to add some highlights. So first I'm going to zoom out and then select the main body, hold shift and use the left arrow key to nudge this out. Add another copy to the right hand side as well. And with the left one selected, set the fill color to none and then make the stroke a bright color. We'll go with magenta. And the goal here is to use the direct selection tool to delete all of the anchor points except the ones that are where I want my highlight to appear. Once I've isolated those anchor points, I can nudge them back into position and then zoom in nice and close. And if you do have trouble selecting this path, just nudge these other pieces out of the way. And just to make my life easier, I can select that pink curve and make sure that this is at the front. Now let's thicken up that stroke. And then from the stroke panel, I can change the width profile to something like this. And this gives us a really nice shape for the highlight. Now let's put it all back together and play around with some blending modes. Now, of course, I don't want this to be pink, so I can select it and sample a different color like the gradient, for example, or I could just pick a color like white. Now let's go and expand the appearance so the shape has a solid fill. But if I hop into outline mode, you can see this shape has a line down the middle. And if I start using blending modes or reduce the opacity, you'll be able to see where the other shapes underneath meet and it will look a bit rubbish. So let's copy this whole section and nudge it out. Drag over everything to select, grab the shape builder tool, hold alt or option and click and drag over everything and then remove just one half of that curve. And you can also trim off the ends if they're just a bit too fine. And by removing half of this shape, I've now made the highlight thinner. And if you'd like a thicker highlight, well, just make sure you account for this earlier in the process when defining the stroke width. So now let's delete that solid white one and then nudge back in the new highlight. And because this doesn't bridge where the two shapes underneath meet, we can then change the blending mode to something like overlay or soft light. And you can see this effect looks really cool and the colors of the logo underneath are also visible too. Right, let's do the same again and add a highlight to the bottom. Now, once you're done, you should have something that looks like this. Take care, and I'll see you next time, you sexy badger.